Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Somos Biology. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about B cell of our immune system. And in the series of lectures, we are discussing about different cells of immune system, their origin. So today we'll be talking about B cells, B lymphocytes, the origin of B lymphocytes, the structure, the location of action of B lymphocytes. We'll be talking about the B lymphocytes function as well as the mechanism of action of B lymphocytes and plasma cells and how they develop antibodies. In general, we'll be talking about all this. So let's begin with the origin of B lymphocyte. As the name is B for bone marrow. So basically B lymphocytes derive from hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow and it develop as well as mature in our bone marrow itself, right? So that is why the B comes in the name B for bone marrow, okay? Uh, and not only B cells, we know that there are various kinds of cells produced in the bone marrow including red blood cells and other varieties of white blood cells like neutrophils, like basophils, we have talked about, right? If you want to know about those cells, you can also watch the video on those topics. Now, this B cell, they undergo gene rearrangement to generate unique B cell receptors or BCRs which are nothing but antibodies. So in very simple words, I can say BCR are, or B cell receptors are category of antibodies. Now different B cells might have different kind of antibodies, they have different kind of receptors. So the BCR or B cell receptors will be varying from cell to cell of the B cells. Self-reactive B cells are eliminated during the maturation process uh, via, known as, uh, via a process known as clonal de deletion. So it's a process while the clonal variation is generated, the B cell variation is being generated by changing B cell receptors and those uh, cells who is targeting itself with the self-active antibodies or self-reactive antibodies or self-reactive B cell receptors are eliminated from the circulation. Next is the structure of the B cell. B cell is a cell with large nucleus and decent amount of cytoplasm, small amount of cytoplasm. Now this is altered when a B cell is transformed into a plasma cell, but the cytoplasm content increases because at times the protein synthesis need to be in full swing and we know the protein synthesis process take place in the cytoplasm, okay. So the surface markers are another very important uh, topic to understand B cells. What are the surface markers that a B cell have? Okay, so here you can see a T helper cell and in the right hand side you have a B cell. The B cell has BCR, B cell receptor, right? So B cell receptor is the very first surface marker that we know which recognize specific antigens, nothing but antibodies. These B cell receptors are nothing but antibodies, okay? Next one is the co-receptor. The co-receptor that a B cell might have CD19, CD21 and CD81. These are all co-receptors. So B cell receptor is the primary receptor. But apart from the primary receptor, we also need, the B cell also needs CD19, CD21 and CD81 as co-receptors. Apart from that, they have MHC class 2 molecules for processing and presenting antigen. Here you can see MHC 2 plus, right? So that is a class 2 MHC molecule and any cell in our body having class 2 MHC molecule is known as professional antigen presenting cell because they can showcase antigen here is shown in the yellow color to the other immune system cells here it is T helper cell. So B cell can cross talk with T helper cell by showing the antigen or antigenic fragment with the help of the MHC class 2 and they have active activation markers like CD40 uh, for the T cell interaction. So when the B cell is interacting with T helper cell, then there is a, a CD40 receptor present in the surface of B cell that interacts with the CD40 ligand, a counterpart showcased by T helper cell. And in immune system, you'll always see there is also crosstalk, communication between cells, cell-cell contacts. And that is possible when they showcase something. I show you an ID, you show your ID. Like if I show your finger like this, you also want to shake my hand. So you'll also get your palm ahead of you. That is the idea here. CD40 is provided by B cell. CD40 ligand is provided by the T cells. Similarly, the B cell has an interaction with the macrophage. So there are different processes to do that. Location of action. What are the location where B cells are active? See primary lymphoid organs like the bone marrow. Primary lymphoid organs are the 
predominant places where the immune system cells originate and also mature. So bone marrow is the place where the B cell is developed. Secondary lymphoid organs are also are the places where the B cell gets distributed. It includes the lymph nodes, spleen and malt. So you can see these are the lymph nodes in, in green color and particularly these dots that are mentioned are the lymph nodes. These dots, these are the places where the lymph nodes position armpits, thigh, those regions more and more lymph nodes are present near the tonsils. So these are the places where so tonsils are also including that part, tonsils are part of that. So these are, so they have the lymphatic system is very well connected to all this. And there are organs like spleen, tonsil where the lymph lymphatic system is pretty well connected. Spleen is another secondary lymphoid organ. And there is also malt, okay, uh, mucus associated lymphoid tissue. And there is also galt, okay. So so these are the places, particularly the malt lymphoid, uh, sorry, the the... Uh, mucus associated lymphoid tissue are the places where the mucus membrane is predominating in our body our primary sexual organs as well as in the eyes in these this places okay so these are the places where the b cells are found although it is produced and mature in bone marrow but it is also found in the secondary lymphoid organs and they circulate in the bloodstream and lymphatic systems to survey for antigens if there is any antigen b cell will try to bind with that antigen and we know B cell has numerous combinations, many, many, many various combinations. And either of these combinations is going to fit to the antigen in a proper lock and key manner. And that particular B cell with the receptor with which it can bind to the antigen successfully is cloned. That is how the whole process works. They are localized to germinal centers for differentiation and maturation. What are the functions of B cells? Uh, their antigen recognition is their most important function through the B cell receptor which is nothing but type of antibody with the help of that antibody they bind to the antigen and this is very very specific very specific interaction next is antibody production the B cell after maturation is converted into plasma cell where they have a high cytoplasm content where the plasma cells are nothing but antibody producing factories Third one is antigen presentation. The B cells also act as a professional antigen presenting cell or APC having class 2 MHC molecule. With the help of that, it can showcase a fragment of antigen to CD4 T helper cells. Formation of memory B cells. For long term immunity, memory B cells are formed. Memory B cells are formed from long term immunity and once the memory B cells are formed, uh, the long term immunity can be maintained. Basically, you know, when a B cell is fixed with the particular B cell receptor with this particular antibody to fight against an antigen that antibody production that information is stored in the B cell so that in future times if the same antigen attacks us again then we can start where we left at the last time that is the memory function cytokine production uh, is another it's a kind of secondary function of the B cell but B cell can also produce specific cytokines for modulating immune responses particularly it is related to the primary and secondary immune response because there are specific antibodies are there for the primary response and there are a different set of antibodies for the secondary response and the way they react are also different mechanism of action now we know the function now how exactly these functions are maintained so for activation purpose the bcr binds to a specific antigen you can see this is the antigen the bcr uh, the b cell with the help of bcr binds to this antigen and then the T dependent activation is done means T cell dependent activation okay and what happens here is that so there is T helper cell which is also known as CD4 plus T helper cell there is also another variety of T cell known as cytotoxic T cell which is known as CD8 plus which is different but this one T helper cell CD4 plus okay and they assist this B cell how the assisting uh, is done here you can see that the this pro, the interactions between t cell receptor and mhc2 complex t cell receptor coming from t cell and mhc2 coming from b cell okay and uh, what else cd4 coming from b cell cd4 uh, cd40 coming from b cell cd40 ligand coming from t helper cell okay so with the help of co stimulatory interaction then the B cell activation is done and the B cell will convert into a plasma cell, long lived plasma cell and they continue to produce antibody like immunoglobulin G or IgG.
okay while on the other hand there is a t cell independent pathway of b cell activation where a pathogen uh, marginally bigger one interacts to the b cell on the sur with the surface of the b cell receptors okay multiple b cell receptors may interact to the bigger antigen or bigger surface antigen and then it triggers again activation of memory cells but in this case without the involvement of t cell the memory b cells are short lived or the plasma cells that we know are short lived but when there is a t cells in involvement the plasma cells are long lived remember that without the t cell the plasma cell cannot live for long duration and they produce only igm as an antibody so that means without the involvement of t so there is no t helper here and as a result they are producing igm as an antibody and which is short lived and only active in a primary remember primary immune response while if the t cell is involved then igg antibody will be produced and they involved in the second they, they mostly in, uh, required in the secondary immune response okay uh, so this is really really important so t cell independent pathway sometimes required by repetitive antigen withdrawal so the moment you provide them antigen with the same antigen same bacteria multiple times for example lipopolysaccharide okay bacterial polysaccharides for example if you introduce that same antigen again and again repeatedly and the b cell will be trained to interact to that via the b cell receptor directly without involving any t cell but uh, the memory cells produced here will be short lived differentiation function the clonal expansion of antigen specific b cell is done so how exactly you can see this activated t cell activates the b cell and once the b cell gets activated it is converted to plasma cells right this plasma cells uh, they produce various kinds of antibodies immunoglobulins are the name of the antibodies igm igg iga ig igd all this mainly five different types of antibodies and they also can produce a memory b cells so these memory b cells are category of cell they have a long term a rapidly responding function to the re-exposure to the same antigen in the future because they have already known the antigen they have already known the pattern of the antigen the property of the antigen so in the future times if you introduce the same antigen they are going to react fast much quicker okay that is the role of memory b cells antibody functions now uh, neutralization is a function of antibody that means blocking pathogens or toxins released by the pathogens both can be done so viruses can be directly blocked by antibodies okay and if the antibody coats the virus the virus become inactivated that is something that is that is known as neutralizing function of the antibody which is the most basic function of the antibody but even more important function is opsonization where a pathogen is coated by antibody or a fragment of pathogen is coated by antibody then either uh, phagocytic cells like macrophage dendritic cells or it can be the neutrophils they can easily target the cell coated by antibody and they engulf it that is known as opsonization or sometimes you know coating the pathogen this is the pathogen in gray color the red one yeah, the antibody in y shaped is the antibody the antibody coated pathogen can also trigger complement activation that causes pore formation in the membrane of bacteria and that's how they can kill the bacteria so this antibody they can also kill that bacteria that is that is a complement activation pathway okay so these are the three separate things neutralization opsonization and complement activation neutralization this one is opsonization and third this one is complement activation all these three uh, work can be done by the antibodies and the germinal cell uh, reactions the somatic hypermutation is the process that involves the modification of the b cell receptor because the antibody or immunoglobulin they have a uh, fc constant region here and uh, this fab variable region so the variable region can have multiple mutations and as a result of which it can develop and give rise to different types of antibody so known as antibody class switching if you want to know more about class switching in details the video is already there in this channel you can watch it here i'm not going to talk about the class switching in details but i'm, I'm going to tell you this class switching is going to generate different forms of antibody they can generate igg igm iga igd and ige 
all these varieties of antibody and we know IgG is used for the secondary immune response IgM is a part of the, uh, the primary response so IgM can form a pentamer like this IgA can form a dimer like like this or uh, sometimes trimer but, uh, but very rarely dimer uh, is the secretory form of the antibody that is generally present in our saliva as well as in the tears and the rest of them IgD, IgE and IgG they are all single they are monovalent okay uh, so basically the the default b cell receptor is this igm this is the this is the b cell receptor at uh, its default settings now this b cell receptor can convert itself from igm to it can become igg it can be become iga or it can become ige depending upon the change due to class switching okay and formation of the b cell memory b cell uh, and high affinity plasma cell for the future reference so what is the summary that we got here we got b cell are uh, essential of humoral aspect of the immunity or humoral immunity or also known as the antibody mediated immunity next is the recognition of antigens so uh, the b cell receptor recognize antigen directly or via the recruitment of t cells both are equally important uh, and they produce antibody because the b cell will turn into plasma cell and they can produce antibodies they generate immunological memory for long lasting protection by producing memory B cells and the germinal center reaction enhance the antibody quality and diversity in our body okay and that maintains the quality by by checking uh, proper B cell production and their functionality okay so that's all regarding the B cells of immune system I believe you have a clear idea on B cell if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and colleagues subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future and also all watch all the videos regarding immunology to get a clear idea thank you bye